welcome to Tome of Uselessness. I'm Devin. I'm Dan. And this week we're talking about WandaVision. But first, Dan, did you like anything this week? Um, yeah. <laughs> or ever. <laughs> or ever. <laughs> um, well, since we last recorded it, uh, it was kind of funny. I was thinking about that uh, before we started how basically I don't have a whole lot because... Like I mentioned previously, I was starting The Rhythm of War, which was a, quite a large novel, and I'm about three quarters of the way through that, so hadn't really been reading anything else. And then been watching, of course, The WandaVision for the show and some other stuff. Uh, but I did Disney Plus. They've started to kind of, I could see the plan forming that they've added a whole bunch of Fox content to Disney Plus under like this star. Uh, icon kind of thing so like there's more mature stuff so i've actually just been binging on american dad nice uh, catch, yeah just catching up on episodes that i haven't seen or you know some episodes that i think are quite funny because i actually really do enjoy that show you know family guy when it first came out was quite hilarious but it just became you know a parody of itself practically whereas american dad parodies other things as well as uh, because of the structure they just kind of have like sci-fi stuff that they can write anything and it works within the show not as a non-sequitur joke oh yeah so i don't know i enjoy it it's uh pretty fun and so that's all i've been really kind of doing <laughs> nice what about yourself what have you been enjoying uh, so i pre-ordered and i read sarah j mass's book um a court of silver flames which is like so she wrote a Court of... Sorry, I'm trying to read it because I can't remember the name. <laughs> a Court of Thorns and Roses, which was the first book in a trilogy. Mm -hmm. And then the second book was A Court of Mist and Fury. And the third book was A Court of Wings and Ruin, which was one character. Um, and then this... This Court of Silver Flames was about the character's sister. Okay. It was really good. I really enjoyed it. It dealt with, like, PTSD and depression and working through stuff and communication, but, like, in a high fantasy setting. Right. That's what I was going to ask. I was like, yeah. Cause yeah, they're all of course, fey, and they yeah. have magic powers, but... It's been getting a lot of backlash, and I don't fully understand why. Um, yeah, it's best not to look into it. <laughs> <laughs> no, people think that it has poor representation uh, because there's not a lot of queer characters, and there's not a lot of, like, people of color. But I'm also very confused because I've just been picturing Faye as, like, having, like, sparkly pastel-colored skin in my mind. <laughs> because right. that's, like, I, I kind of feel like if they're, if they're like, otherworldly magical creatures, they, they don't really look that, like, human anymore. Mm -hmm. So I think I've missed something. I don't find anything problematic about the book, but I will give a heads up to other people to maybe do some research if that would if you would find that upsetting. I guess these are quite popular then if they're, you know, at that kind of level of the zeitgeist that people are like finding that about it. Yeah, I think I think they are pretty popular. They were like super so on TikTok, which I know is a bubble, Book Talk was very into Sarah J. Mass. And then as soon as this book came out, there was like weird like backlash to anybody who reviewed it. And like people were getting death threats and stuff like that. And I'm I'm just I'm, I'm like as a elder millennial, I feel that it's not that offensive. But I also grew up on a time when, like, scary movie was the height of comedy. So <laughs> who, who knows <laughs> what I think? <laughs> I might be missing the, missing the point. But I thought it was okay. I also don't picture the Fae as, like, very human looking. Like, I think they look more like, like, you know, like the elves in Hellboy 2? Yeah. 
that's kind of more how I picture them. So I don't know. That's just me. I'm like, oh, they're not human. They're fine. <laughs> yeah, like I was try- kind of thinking as well that like I picture a lot of that kind of stuff like um, from the Dresden Files, like when he goes and he's, you know, interacts with the, the fairy courts all the time that it's like they don't look like us. <laughs> Yeah, they have, like, more feline features, and there's... Yeah, anyway, so, I don't know. I I enjoyed them, but I, I do want to, you know, be responsible and say, um, do your own research and look into it, and if it's something that's going to upset you, don't read it. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Fair enough. And then aside from that, I've been re-watching Parks and Rec, because it's on Netflix now. Oh, yeah. And WandaVision, and, like, I just, I haven't really been consuming that much media lately. Yeah, that happens. I've been, like, working on stuff, so, I don't know. That's it, that's (laughs) all I got. Two things. Parks and Rec, good. Court of Silver Flames, I liked it, you might not. The end. (laughs) Fair enough. Although I think that you, Dan, might enjoy the series as a whole. Maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Because it's fantasy stuff and it's cool. You right. have cool powers and you'd be like, those are cool powers. <laughs> that's, that's it. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of on and off sometimes about fantasy. Maybe because I've been reading it since like I was a kid. Like, yeah. Whereas these days I definitely have been, you know, a little more recently, more trying to, you know, get into some more sci-fi stuff. And then like The Rhythm of War, the Brandon Sanderson is a fantasy series. But it's like his is the only stuff at the moment that I'm kind of like into fantasy wise where it's yeah yeah, but you know as you know i've been enjoying fantasy stuff since i was young (laughs) i do like one of the things i really like about sarah j mass is that there's interesting like political storylines going on and Mm -hmm. the magic systems that they use are interesting the creatures are interesting but it's also very grounded and kind of like human emotions like people have reasonable reactions to things in her books right like if you watch somebody get murdered in front of you then you're sad for a bit (laughs) (laughs) you know that kind of thing it's not just like i don't know it's not just brushed off so i find it interesting for that i just love other people's misery that's what it comes to (laughs) But anyways, we should move on and talk about WandaVision, correct? Sure. Excellent. What'd you think? I thought it was excellent. <laughs> Same. Well, thanks for listening. <laughs> yeah. No, it was interesting thinking a bit about this because I know when Marvel announced their shows, like back when they announced that Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which is upcoming, of course, and Loki and this... Of the three that they announced, I was more excited for WandaVision compared to the other two. Oh, really? I was most excited for Loki. Yes, which I know I know you were. For obvious reasons, because yeah. he's my husband. <laughs> but this one interested me the most because I really like the two characters, and I've heard that like there are some really good comic book runs involving Vision, particularly, that uh, because he's a robot. <laughs> And Scarlet Witch. There's some cool comic book stories with her, too. Oh, absolutely. I just meant, like, this concept of them trying to live a suburban life. I was like, I had heard about, like, they've done that kind of thing before. And I was like, oh, that would be pretty cool. And I had heard. So I knew nothing, of course, going in, except for that it was like, it's going to be them. And they're going to do, like, different eras of sitcom television. And I was like, I'm in. (laughs) (laughs) And that was all I knew going in. And the show very much exceeded my expectations. I really enjoyed it. Same. I thought it was great. Before we get too much into it, or maybe I should wait till after, there's been some criticism about the series as a whole. I think most people have enjoyed it, but um, I I did note some criticism that people had, and I was just going to see what you thought about it. Sure. Do you want to start with that, or should we talk about the plot first? What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? I want to be so sad that I create an alternative reality. Sure, which was the plot of WandaVision. <laughs> Criticism. Okay, yeah. Let's go with that first. Or no, sure. let's do the story first. That makes more sense. Okay. Uh, should I try to sum it up or do you want to? Sure, I can sum up a little bit here. 
Well, I'll start us off. It, I thought it was really well constructed in that you don't know all the answers and they're really well doled out, but it's basically we get introduced to Wanda and Vision and they're living in a um, 1960s or 50s, is it? I think the, the first episode is 50s. It's yeah, based 50s. off the Dick Van Dyke show. And then yeah. it's the 60s, which is the second um, episode. Yeah. Bewitched. Yeah. And yeah. then the third episode is 70s, which is supposed to be Brady Bunch, I think. Yeah, I guess it's Brady Bunch-esque. Yeah. And then I wasn't sure what the 80s one was based off of, but it had a very family ties kind of feel. Yeah, I think 4 or 5 kind of like mixed with that early... Uh, late 80s into the early 90s. Well, because then, like, the 90s was supposed to be Malcolm in the Middle. Yeah. And then the 2000s was supposed to be Modern Family. Yeah. Slash The Office. Well, that whole talking to the camera genre. Yeah. But anyway, it's her, and they're just living the suburban life, but things are not as they appear. And as the show continues on... While jumping through the genres, they they have children and their life grows, and then but there are outside influences because as we discover, spoilers, this is not an alternate reality. She created this. Well, it's an alternate reality, but created on Earth, and there are people who are like, "Hey, we can't have this town in New Jersey be t- taken over by one of the X Avengers," <laughs> <laughs> and you know they're trying to solve the plot, as it were, bring it down. But there's a another plot which again, have you reveal later that there's a witch who wants to try to replicate or learn from Wanda or steal her powers. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the show. <laughs> and there's a punch up at the end and it's good fun. It is good fun. <laughs> I really enjoyed the last episode. I know not everybody feels that way, but I personally, I really enjoyed it. I cried a little bit. I, I really enjoyed the last episode as well. I was surprised to see like, potential negative reaction to it i was like okay it was satisfactory and wrapped up really well and brought all the story elements together okay (laughs) i think that a lot of the criticism that comes from wandavision came from a quote from paul bettany (laughs) because in an interview that came out and spoilers for the mandalorian heads up in an (laughs) interview that came out around the time when Luke made an appearance on The Mandalorian, Paul Bettany was quoted in an interview saying that WandaVision in the last... Or WandaVision was going to have a cameo that was even bigger than Luke in <laughs> The Mandalorian, and that an actor that he had never worked with but always wanted to work with was going to show up. Now, I think, spoilers, there's like a, an anti-vision or an evil vil- vision, mm-hmm. the white vision, and I think Paul Bettany was talking about himself. I think so as well. I mean, that sounds like a, like a joke. <laughs> yeah. I think that he was like... So I think a lot of people were disappointed that there wasn't a... Doctor Strange cameo because people know that Wanda is supposed to be in the next Doctor Strange movie somehow. Right. And there had been little trail like little breadcrumbs with the um the book that she has is like a book from Doctor Strange's library. And then I guess in the post post credit scene of the last episode, they're playing the Doctor Strange theme. Sure. So I I think people were disappointed that Benedict Cumberbatch was not in the episode. Yeah, but that has nothing relevant to WandaVision (laughs) itself. (laughs) I'm aware. (laughs) (laughs) Also, like anybody who's any aware of any sci-fi franchises, you can't have literally Mark Hamill showing up in Mandalorian is the biggest potential cameo appearance ever. Like, how can you even top that? (laughs) Well, I guess he could have shown up in WandaVision. <laughs> sure. I mean, that'd be that'd be amazing. But it's just like, what else could be bigger than having original <laughs> Luke Skywalker show up in your Star Wars show? <laughs> yeah. 
so I think some people were disappointed with that, which right. again, no, not WandaVision's fault. Um, I've also heard criticism that this all the storylines weren't properly wrapped up. But I disagree. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I guess maybe people were mad that Kat Dennings wasn't really in the last episode that much. Yeah, I was I was kind of hoping that uh, there'd be a little more of her, but I was also like, well, it happens. <laughs> yep. And I, I also think that, like, I don't know about other platforms, but I know that TikTok, because that's where I spend most of my time, was very, very into theorizing about the show, which gets dangerous because if if it's not what you thought it was going to be, it ends up being disappointing, I guess. It can be. I mean, sometimes, of course, you know, the writers can surprise you. Because even I was Everybody wanted Mephisto surprised. in it. That's what it came down to. <laughs> right. And see, as as a comic book, not as knowledgeable, I don't even know. Like, I know he's a, I've heard the name, but I also don't know what his involvement is in the Marvel Universe. So he means nothing to me. <laughs> he's like basically Satan. And I think that's why he wasn't in the show, because Disney is still Disney, even when right. they're Marvel. So. Yeah. I don't know. I thought I really liked it. I thought they did a very good job of introducing more magic into the Marvel universe. Yeah, and that was one thing that's in one of my notes that like I was very surprised that they went so heavily leaning into magic, which great because that's part of the Marvel universe that they've introduced through Doctor Strange. But it was also like that was it was just him and Wanda. But it was like, oh, no, here we go. We're leaning heavy into it and we're going full magic. And I thought that was awesome. I thought it was awesome, too. Just like like part of the reason I like Thor Ragnarok so much is because they just leaned into it being a crazy space future heavy metal episode. Right. Like, yeah, <laughs> you can't half ass magic and you can't half ass crazy space capades you have to lean all the way in yeah yeah and otherwise that, like, it doesn't work <laughs> yeah uh, yeah absolutely and then when they did that reveal and kind of went full on because my like i have it in my notes here because i took notes as i went that uh like i initially thought uh agnes's reveal was that or yeah it was, it was agnes sorry i don't i always want to call her agatha for some reason but <laughs> so she's Agnes as the neighbor, Agatha as the witch. That's what it is. But uh, when yeah. they were doing that reveal that it was Agnes all along, I honestly thought that it was still Wanda Maximov controlling that and projecting her evil side into this new to, into this character to try to like reconcile herself, like her demons within. And then okay. it was revealed that it was a different person. And I was like, whoa, OK, that was I was I fully was not expecting that. <laughs> Oh, totally. And they did that nice little, like, fake out with um, when Vision talks to her and she's all, like, pretends to be being controlled as well. Mm -hmm. It was so good. Yeah, exactly. That. So that, that kind of theorizing, because as you know, I don't really look into fan theories and other things going on because I just want to, you know, either come up with my own or try to kind of be surprised by the shows because of years and years of disappointment. So... <laughs> People got to learn. Sure. Stop doing that. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Theorize afterwards. <laughs> but anyway, no, because I honestly thought that was the direction the show was going to go. And then when they changed that direction, it was surprising. But also I was like, OK, this is this is cool, because then like they had leaned heavily into magic. They revealed this character in a extra mythology and broadening the MCU, but within the story and sort of changing because Wanda, of course, uh, in the comics, she's a mutant, her and her brother. At the time when they, she was introduced in the MCU, they didn't own that. They do now. <laughs> and it's like, now yeah. they can just kind of do what they want. But then they also kind of, not retcon, but then we're just like, okay, so she had some powers as a kid and the Mind Stone like amped her up. And I was like, okay, that's cool. <laughs> I also, one of the my favorite things in the series, um, speaking of like, not owning the rights to to mutants, basically. <laughs> yeah. Was that they used the Quicksilver from um, the Fox, like Days of Future Past. 
Peters, yeah. Yeah, Evan Peters, yeah. As her brother. And then it was like, because it made people think like, oh, is this how they're going to, you know, is that from an alternate universe, blah, blah, blah. And then the reveal that he was just the kid, the neighbor kid, right? Yeah, just the dude next door. <laughs> just the dude next door. And that Agatha had like implanted memories in his head and like, I thought, or, or well, magicked him into being her brother. I just, I thought that was really cool. I liked the way that played out. Yeah. Well, I, and I guess, I guess we're kind of jumping all over the place here, but I don't know. Do you want to talk about some of the like earlier episodes before we get into all the heavy stuff in the end? <laughs> yeah, sure. But first, I would just like to say that I think Eliz- Elizabeth Olsen, right? That's her mm-hmm. name, the actress? Yeah. Is an incredible actress. I totally agree. (laughs) I wish they had used her more in previous Marvel movies because I had no idea how good she was. There was so many moments watching it, like um, the the 90s episode, or again, I think it was the 90s episode with the the Halloween episode. When she's, like, her facial expressions and, like, her reactions and stuff... I don't know. I just, I 100% believed that she was in love with vision and having this struggle. And I don't know. I just, I was, it's not, not, I don't always get like blown away by actors, but like she blew me away. She was so good. Well, and even uh, from my, in my note, looking at my notes, I have a note for, from episode three. That was one of my favorite moments as well as when, after she has her children and then uh, Rambo slips up and talks about Ultron. And then she does that switch from just like pleasant to Z- Sokovian death machine. Yes. And then her accent comes in and she kind of does like that head cock. And you're like, oh, God, this woman is going to die now. <laughs> <laughs> and like you said, you just you read that all in her face and just like like two words. And you're like, oh, no. <laughs> like, Yeah, like she's so good. Yeah, absolutely. I think she and she really nails uh, the character for sure throughout the entire series. Oh, definitely. Okay, now I'm ready to talk about specifics. I just had to say that I think she's a great actress. (laughs) Yeah, and I'm I'm glad we got to see like these these nine episodes and television now is at that quality level that she's you know both her and Paul Bettany and everybody in the show is able to like deliver some performances and not just be like, oh, we're just like acting in this thing. Like, it's not just generic formulaic. It's like, there's a whole bunch going on. I also like, I really appreciate the format of one episode a week and that it's being released on Disney plus and not like a, uh, not like a network because Mm -hmm. the episodes could kind of be the length that they needed to be. They didn't have to like cut it for time or make it longer or account ad breaks into the editing or anything yeah yeah just it gave all the characters a chance to like breathe and and really like enrich i don't know enrich it for me i guess i don't know (laughs) yeah and i think they learned some lessons from mandalorian especially mandalorian season one um because like you said there could be some episodes that might be a little shorter but then some that because of the story or what they wanted to tell they're like oh we'll just make it longer who cares <laughs> like there's no set time totally yeah, yeah. It's, it's good it was really good yeah and it's kind of interesting how the week-to-week format can work well versus sometimes just like yeah like dumping the whole season all at once or uh i know some shows have done like half and then half can kind of work but uh, i don't know uh, this was kind of a, a fun ride for i did like how they ep- released episode one and two at the same time because then it was kind of like a you got like that, like an hour punch of just like here's the show which was pretty cool totally and they they it was um like if this came out 10 years ago it would have ended up being like uh like a cw like the flash kind of situation mm-hmm and I'm just really glad that it wasn't that. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting kind of, uh, again, going back to Mandalorian, it was like an interesting experiment in this. And I know Netflix has done it, but it's like not like a like a Disney making like we're going to make nine episodes of this thing that's nearly nine hours long, let's say. Yeah. And we're putting it on our own streaming platform. But it's yeah, like I was saying, like television now. Like, they put a lot of money into it to be like, we're making this as though we're making a long movie. (laughs) 
Totally. And it kind of like, not that Disney is responsible for the pandemic, but it kind of came out at the right time too. Well, and of course the pandemic messed up with like their whole release schedule because Falcon and the Winter Soldier was supposed to come out first, like last year. (laughs) Yeah. But I mean, like um, people can't go to movie theaters. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Well, like, some can, but I don't think we can still, which I'm saying. No, we like movie theaters are closed, and like I don't know, it it was cool to have that quality on a show. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. Anyways, back to the show. Mm-hmm. I thought, you know, this is gonna sound really stupid, but I fucking love old TV shows. Like I love I Love Lucy and stuff like that, and Bewitched, and I Dream a Genie. Yep. And if the entire show had just been them parodying or, like, doing, like, their version of those old shows, I would have watched it as enthusiastically as I watched it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, uh, you know, I have it down in my notes. Those first two episodes were just so fun to They're have just... these old sitcom plots, but with people with superpowers. <laughs> and, yeah, they like you said, they're just... It. Yeah, they're just super simple. She's like, I got to make a dinner. Oh, and then, you know, it, things are going wrong. And that's like comical. And but it was fun. <laughs> oh, so good. They just they nailed like the timing and the beats. And then because they nailed it so well, like the dialogue, everything, mm-hmm. when something weird happens, it really stands out and it really is impactful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was so yeah. good. Yeah, because like in the second episode when the that beekeeper, quote unquote beekeeper guy comes out of the sewer and then she just like resets reality, you're just like, whoa, what is happening here? Yeah, <laughs> so good. Yeah. Even in the first episode when Vision's boss is choking. Yes. And she's like, Vision, help him, right? And her voice yeah. kind of goes flat and then he like uses his powers to like scoop it out of his neck or out of his throat. <laughs> the little piece of food. Like, that was even just, like, super jarring and weird, right? Mm-hmm. So good. Yeah, and then uh, when they move into episode three and stuff like that, that's when, um, yeah, that's when we get some more reveals of, like, okay, yeah, like, there's, like, the sword agents and there's something going on and, uh, you know, you get a little more to the outside world and that's when it's, yeah, more apparent that, uh, yeah, like they they kind of really did a good job of laying down the, like you said, the breadcrumbs of just like what's happening. Here's a little taste, but so you could put it together sort of yourself as it went. Totally. When Rambo, Maria Rambo, that's her name, right? Maria? Monica Rambo. Monica. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So bad, that's all right. right? Yeah. Rambo is the last name, at least. Yeah. Did you get right away that she was Captain Marvel's friend's daughter? I don't remember. Probably not because I haven't seen Cap. I've only seen the Captain Marvel once. So, <laughs> I on a fluke, I rewatched it like a week or two before the show started. Oh, really? <laughs> so I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. Yeah, I, I I I haven't seen it. I only saw. I've only seen it once, and uh, so I didn't pick up on that. But then as soon as they were kind of like talking, and then I think when they talked about her mom and stuff like that, and they showed like you know it's sort of like the pieces were falling into place that i was like it all made sense that it was her i was like oh yeah okay (laughs) like yeah yeah (laughs) yeah but yeah it was uh you know she gets pregnant and then has the kids in like the same episode essentially (laughs) wanda not monica just yeah clarify (laughs) sorry but yeah i guess you did did you have a point more about monica no, no, I just wanted to point that out. But I, right. we were just talking about her, and then you're like, she gets pregnant. And I'm like, no, no, no. It's, people need to know that it wasn't her. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah, it was. No, that's all right. And then, uh, so yeah, like Wanda has some, some twins. And then, so in the next episode, that's when episode four uh, called uh, We Interrupt This Program, that's when we get like the big kind of exposition of the outside world and how she came to investigate and. Uh, like there's the FBI officer Jimmy Wu, and we get Darcy coming back and stuff like that. That's when it really kind of like, yeah, they take you out of the program to be like, here's what's going on. <laughs> I really liked the chemistry between um, Monica, Darcy, and is it Jimmy? Jimmy Wu? Yeah. 
I thought they were they're they're a fun little trio. Yeah, they were. I I would watch a show about them being best friends. <laughs> <laughs> The funniest was for me was I, I didn't immediately recognize Kat Dennings. And then when they were, and I was like, this woman was either doing a spot on Kat Dennings impression, impression or impersonation, or it is her. <laughs> <laughs> There's been like, so, okay, wait, I'll, I'll wait till we get to that episode. Never mind. Okay. There's, there's fan theorizing because oh. of what happens to Monica. Mm-hmm. Should, yeah. should I go, do you want me to go into it now well and I was going to say just real quick about episode 4 when they do the interrupt this program that's when again things are you know things are going well but then Wanda because the children I think and then she, you know her powers are sort of slipping up and they do that great reveal shot where Vision is dead Vision for like a second yes that was so creepy and awesome yeah and I really love that and like you said it's those moments that kind of like jar out of the sitcom life that you're just like and it works so well like that juxtaposition then you're just like whoa and then she like you know kind of refocuses and then he's you know purple vision again (laughs) yeah isn't that the episode where the dick leader of sword also shows um darcy and monica and jimmy footage of wanda breaking into sword to steal vision's body yes yeah which we find out later wasn't what happened. <laughs> yeah, and that again was a great setup and a great kind of like reversal because, yeah, you just kind of buy it. You're like, because it made sense. You're like, Wanda loved Vision. She would steal his body and bring him back to life. I could totally buy that. <laughs> right? Yeah, but then what it actually turns out being is that she goes to Sword to request his body so that she can give him a funeral. Yeah. And that's that was the whole catalyst of the whole show was her being sad that they wouldn't let her. Yeah. <laughs> like if they had just given Wanda Vision's body, she could have gone and buried it in that lot that their house was supposed to be, and that would have been fine. Everybody would have won. <laughs> yeah, she would have been sad, but probably moved on. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and and again, that was that was a great kind of turnaround. Yeah. Uh, and then what's the next, the next episode is the Halloween episode, right? Uh, no, episode five in between that is when the kids grow up and they get a dog. Oh, oh the dog dies. Yeah. They get a dog and then I guess Agatha kills it. Right. Well, and also this is uh, where we get re- like vision finally kind of like, uh, he wakes up his coworker or whatever. And then I think he talks with him and realizes something's going on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's funny because that actor is on TikTok and people are like, through the whole series, were like asking him like, what was going on? Like they were just harassing him, being like, is it this? Is it that? And then he was making all these videos that are like, I want to keep my job. Fuck you. Go away. (laughs) I'm not telling you anything. (laughs) Well, and then that episode as well had the, um, they sent in the drone and was going to attack Wanda. Oh yeah. Which was again talking about the the you know her acting and the just the switch because it goes from lighthearted sitcom they send in this drone and then the you know the feed scrambles and she just steps out of the wall with the drone and is just like leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> Turns all the you know bewitches all the the military guys to point at Hayward and stuff like that. And you're just like leave her alone, man. She will kill you. <laughs> you can just leave her alone. <laughs> yeah. And then, like you said, the next episode was the Halloween episode. And this is where, from that point on, from episode five to nine, it's like, this is, yeah, it all, it's it's heavy and it's intense and very well made. I think well the made. Halloween episode was my favorite episode, and that's why I keep talking about it. <laughs> well, it's pretty great. What do you got to say about it? Uh, well, first of all, it's the first time they see kids in, in the town. Right. She's, she's been having them all locked in their rooms, I guess. It's revealed later. Um, (laughs) Which is crazy. I also really like that Wanda and Vision are basically dressed up like they're comic book versions of themselves. Yeah, which was, of course, a great kind of like subversion because everyone was all like, she's in the costume, but it's just like a Halloween costume. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
and Vision becomes like super suspicious and uh, lies to her and starts to investigate things. And it's it just that really creepy scene where, you, you know, the further he gets away from Wanda, the less people do. Yeah, like, they're like not really alive. They're just like standing in place. <laughs> yeah, like that one lady's like crying as she's hanging up laundry. <laughs> <laughs> tears yeah. rolling down her face and then that's a, that's also at the end of the episode he tries to leave right yes and that is super cool because he starts to deteriorate yeah yeah and that's my first note on about this episode is is awesome and dark <laughs> it was awesome and dark <laughs> yeah like I said, they, again, mix so well and Evan Peters was doing a great job he was, you know, being a lot of fun with oh, the kids yeah. and stuff like that and you know, taking him around and he's got his powers. It's, so he's quicksilvering around. And I love the effects at the end. Like I said, when Vision's trying to break through the barrier and he comes out on the other side. It looks so good. <laughs> yeah, it looks so good. And he's just breaking down and getting all messed up. And uh, Darcy's there and she's like, uh, aren't you going to help him? <laughs> yeah, then they chain her to a car. <laughs> yeah. Although, uh, I guess, was it in the previous episode or that episode? Oh, that episode... Kind of bothered me the one point because uh, Rambo, Wu, and Darcy are kicked out of the the project because of their "Hey, we shouldn't kill Wanda" stance, <laughs> and then they just kind of break into some kind of mainframe area, and there's no guards, no one comes to check on said mainframe area for like hours, presumably. <laughs> They're fine. <laughs> no, come, like that kind of. I'm like, come on. <laughs> All right, you know what? I find it believable because I've had to work with big groups of people before. <laughs> Sometimes you just don't know what people are doing. No, I get that, but I'm also like, no one would come to check on said area or check the door. I don't know. That that kind of bothered me. <laughs> That's fair. I get where you're coming from. I also yeah. I also find it believable though because I just think that they were like, yeah, no one's here. It's fine. Yeah. But as you said, uh, like, yeah, Wu and uh, Rambo went to do something else. And so Darcy stayed on the in the base. She gets caught and then chained to a car. <laughs> and then in order to save Vision, the episode ends with Wanda expanding the hex. Yes. Which is, again, like I was saying, this kind of goes back to in the beginning parts that you're not really sure is it all her? Is it not? And then it's just like when she does that, you're like, okay, this is 100% all her. <laughs> yeah, totally. And then I, I love that the in the next episode, she made everybody that joined the Hex basically became a circus. Yeah. Which I thought was great. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of fun. All the tents and everything and <laughs> everybody. They're all clowns. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's a nice shade there, Wanda. Good work. <laughs> <laughs> that's also then, a great episode because she just start, she's just falling apart. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and that that's that, that that's my first note about it as well, is that just, like, she's losing it and her powers are sort of going wacko. <laughs> yeah. Um, we should also, I get, was it in the, the Halloween episode when Rambo walks through the Hex, or was that this episode? Ooh, it, it's uh, I think it's this one. It's either this one or the next one. Yeah, that was really cool, though. That The effect? Yeah. Because um, Monica wants to go help Wanda, so she walks through and gets powers, because it's been rewriting her DNA. Mm-hmm. Which, this is what I wanted to point out earlier. A fan theory is that Darcy is going to become Lady Loki. Oh, yeah? Because she has gone through the, the hex, too. Yeah. And because she's familiar with Asgard. That's it. That's the end of the theory. But I thought, oh, that would be interesting. I also think people just want to see her and Tom Hiddleston kiss, which is okay by me. <laughs> well, and I, and I was going to say, uh, like, I could see her coming back because, you know, they're making uh, Thor Love and Thunder with Natalie Portman. So it's like, yeah, they could give her powers and have her do stuff as well. Like Kat Dennings, that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, and and I think we were speaking a bit about that theory um, previously, and I was like, oh, it could very well work because her expansion of the hex, of course, catches more people. And I thought like it was maybe that she would do something that could affect like, you know, the world as a whole, or at least a large chunk of America. And then it's like re-scrambling people's DNAs to give them powers or whatever they wanted to do (laughs) because they could do whatever they want. (laughs) Yeah, totally. Um, But yeah, it is in seven when she goes through the barrier. Yeah, that those special effects when like when she's walking through the barrier looks so cool. And then what she sees when she comes through, like because you can see all the electromagnetic fields, right? Yeah. yeah, that's because she's Photon, right? That's the name of the the hero that they're turning her into. I don't know. Let me wait. Let me look it up quick. No, yeah. that's what I mean. It's they could be turning her into that, or just give her a similar power set. It could be whatever they want. <laughs> that's true. That's true, but there is a hero with those powers. And yeah. I think this is what I was saying a little bit earlier, how it's like, as a fan of like these M- the MCU movies and the, this MCU content, that I'm not wedded to 50 years of comics, so I don't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, like that they, they, that they do different stuff, because I'm like, oh, it was good within it. If it was bad, I'd be like, oh, that was bad. But it's like, no, it was enjoyable. So... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she's going to be in Captain Marvel, too. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. She's yeah, because with the, the, the post-credit reveal at the end, right? That makes perfect sense. Yeah. She's going to type in Monica Rambo hero name. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Spectrum? I thought it was Fo- Photon. I could be wrong. Well, like I said, that she could have power sets from either, and, or it could be a combination of both. I think she is going to take over as Captain Marvel, because I think at, at some point in the comics she was Captain Marvel. Again, it's possible. Who knows? I'm I'm going to stop talking now, because I apparently don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> what? Just to go back to... To yell at me. <laughs> yeah, just to go back uh, to episode seven, this was, like, again really getting into the meat of it uh, her powers are going all out of the fritz and again great effects and blending so she's like in her living room and parts of it are changing from the 1960s style or 50s style to you know modern and vice versa oh, yeah, and it's I all kind of going that. It was so cool yeah it's all going kind of out of the whack and we didn't really mention uh, this was also something talking about effects and technical how they played with the aspect ratio but not in a jarring way but in like a clever way because of course the show starts in like very narrow television format and then expands and as time goes on and stuff like that so you kind of knew eras or that you were in the real world now (laughs) yeah i thought that was really well done too yeah it really uh played to the strength of that and was very interesting uh, as just a simple little thing like that (laughs) you know maybe people who with the right kind of viewing platform would have a problem or like early 2000s where people are like I don't want the black bars. And you're like, you don't understand that black bars are good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, seven was definitely um, more reveals. And that's when the, uh, you get the, the Agatha all along at the end, which like I said earlier, I thought she created her own villain, but. Nope. Not the case. <laughs> so then the next episode, is that the one where Agatha takes her through all her important moments in life? Yeah, it starts with her kind of character backstory about how she was going to get killed by her mom and her coven. And then she just sucks all her power or all all their power. Sorry. And she uses dark magic. Yeah. (laughs) It was neat. (laughs) And then, like you said, it's because she brought her down to the to the basement and brings Wanda through her life. Yeah, I thought that was a really cool way to explain that Wanda's always kind of had some power, but that the the Mind Stone, right? The Mind Stone? Yep. Really just, like, amplified them. Yeah. And to make her the Scarlet Witch who uses space. chaos magic. Well, and, yeah, this episode, like, again, talking about, the, like, the television quote, like, this episode blew me away. Um, just in terms of its, like, storytelling and the effects and everything. Uh, the only thing I was, I was really kind of hoping we'd get the, 
the Hydra scientist that was at the base in the beginning of Ultron as like a small cameo, but he unfortunately wasn't there. That's okay, though. Yeah. Um, but everything else about it was just like so good and just like the lean heavily into the magic. And yeah, so the, and this was also the reveal where because they show her going to visit Vision at the end and how she didn't take the body. No, she just, you know, got real sad. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, it, and it's, it was pretty interesting how because like Hayward kind of lets that slip because he was just like, well, you'd have the power to bring him back to life. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was. Yeah, it was very good. Mm-hmm. And like you said, all those moments through her life were, again, very well executed, very well done, very, you know, very, I, I believed it. I like, you know, I was sold, essentially. Yeah, the scene where her and Vision are watching Malcolm in the Middle together, mm-hmm. and uh, what does he say about grief? Grief is just... Love like, enduring or something along Love enduring? Lines. Oh, yeah. I was like ready to die. I was... So sad. (laughs) (laughs) I'm also going to go to an empty lot and create an alternate reality. (laughs) There's one right beside my house, Dan. (laughs) That's that's true, yeah. Well, and just um, just the setup, of course, of the scene, how because she's there and she's watching, and and then she just like calls out his name and he comes through the wall. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And he's like, "Uh, I wasn't like you know standing there or anything. Anything more about that? Or, and then, of course, you got the episode nine. The final episode. Da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. Oh, before we get into it, another sure. criticism I just remembered was where were the other Avengers? Why weren't they helping her? Of course, that's always a criticism of, of every single one of these movies is where is anyone else? <laughs> but here's my here's what I think. OK, sure. Captain America, running around through time. Yeah. Tony Stark, dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, and to, to go along with what you're about to say, from what I can tell, this takes place three weeks after Endgame. Yeah. Yeah. So, Captain America's running around through time. Tony Stark, dead. Uh, Pepper Potts, mourning her, the loss of her husband. Mm-hmm. And she's also not an Avenger. <laughs> Captain Marvel's in space. Yeah. Thor's in space. Guardians of the Galaxy crew in space. Yeah, with Thor. <laughs> with Nakamura, though. We had an argument. Do you remember? I was like, Gamora was not on the ship. And you were like, yes, she is. She is not on the ship, Dan. No, I don't recall arguing that. I yeah, recall- you, you, I do. I remember this argument, and you were like, "No, she goes with them," and I'm like, "No, she doesn't." She's no, because they have a, they flash the screen saying Gamora missing. I think we were arguing about which version of Gamora it was. Maybe you were having that argument with someone else. No, I'm pretty sure it was you. <laughs> no, because <laughs> I knew Gamora wasn't on there because Peter Quill is like, "I have to find Gamora." Yeah, but it is old Gamora. It's not the one that was he loves, sacrificed yeah. for the Soul Stone. Yeah. No, I I know. I know she's not there. Anyway, continue on. We're talking the other adventures. Okay, okay. So no I one's in town. Know, <laughs> don't know what Ant Man's doing. But I mean how how useful would he be anyways? I assume he's with um, his daughter. <laughs> he's with his daughter and his yeah. lady friend. Yeah. Mrs. The Wasp. T'Challa's back in Wakanda being the king. Yeah. Valkyrie's over in New Asgard being the king. Yeah. And then who who else? There's no other Avengers, right? Scarlet Witch is dead. Clint would probably Clint would probably be the most likely person who could help Wanda because they seem to have a bond. Mm-hmm. But, but he's, he's probably, probably with his family. With his family that he hasn't seen for five years. Yeah. Also, she then is Scarlet them- Witch. Huh? You said Scarlet Witch is dead, but she is Scarlet Witch. Oh, sorry. Scarlet Johansson is dead. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what I figured you were talking about. <laughs> My bad. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure her and Doctor Strange haven't talked up to this point, so why would he be helping? 
There's no one. Yeah. <laughs> That's my conclusion. They're all busy. Clint maybe should have helped. Maybe Ant-Man. But the rest of them have pretty good excuses for not being there. Well, and, and again, she, you know, after in the final scenes of, of Endgame, of course, we see her talking with Clint and stuff like that. And, you know, mourning Vision and Vision and Black Widow's kind of lost. But I think, like you said, it was more the seeing of the body and realizing that there was a husk and nothing left that drove her further into a sadness. Like, a, you know. Yeah, and there was no, and like, not only was there it a husk, but... It was, they were dismantling him for parts. Yeah. <laughs> and she didn't get to have a funeral or any sort of closure. So, yeah. Yeah. Plus, and I think we talked about this in our end game, and they even mentioned it, uh, Darcy mentions it to Vision, how it's like, she killed him, and then, Vision, then Thanos brought him back and then killed him in front of her. <laughs> so yeah. Like, there, was, there was like the double. She's like, I had to kill the person I love, and then he still dies. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so it's like he died twice in front of her, right? And one time at her hand. <laughs> yeah, she has every reason to be this sad. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. <laughs> okay. Now for the final episode, I guess. Sure. But uh, it was great. I, I don't know. I, I really enjoyed the finale. As far as like television finales or a conclusion to a movie... Uh, or a series, I thought it really hit the beats and really nailed it. Same. I thought that they did a good job of balancing action with emotion. Mm -hmm. The fight scenes were cool and well choreographed. I could watch Vision fight Vision just like flying around with like head beams (laughs) for hours. (laughs) (laughs) I also thought that the way that Vision defeated white vision was like really interesting and cool yes and that was one of the things like um, i know about that is like i loved how wanda's battle with agatha was about like power and vision's battle with vision was about um philosophy and the you know what is existence (laughs) yeah because um the evil vision the white vision that was made by sword he's like my directive is to kill the vision Mm-hmm. And Vision's like, but I'm not the real Vision, and neither are you. And then he uses that thought experiment to explain it to him. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, yeah, you're right. Bye! <laughs> <laughs> well, he also, you know, restores his memories. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Then <laughs> then he leaves. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, the fight scene between Scarlet Witch and Agatha was great. Mm-hmm. Actually... When Agatha makes everybody not under Scarlet Witch's control, yeah, and and they're just like they're like we feel your pain, we feel your sorrow, you know, let us out, let us free. It was just like scary and heartbreaking. Yeah, had that kind of like a you know zombie movie aesthetic as well, where everyone's around her and just like closing in. Yeah. And then when they fight, and then when you find out that she's, you know, spoilers, she's been missing hitting her because she's been doing the runes so that she could outsmart Agatha. That was Mm -hmm. great. Good twist. Yeah. And then, uh, and then she wins and she gets to live happily with her family for the rest of her life. (laughs) For five minutes. (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) Yeah, some of my thoughts on it as well were how it was cool. Like, everybody had a moment uh, to shine, which is, uh, you know, pretty much a staple of these Marvel uh, films. And, like, the climax is everybody gets to do something cool. Even Pietro, the fake one, you know, has a cool Quicksilver moment where he knocks over Rambo. Yeah. Until she, she, she you know, reverses it on him. The only thing that was kind of sort of a, a letdown in a sense was during the final fight where it's Agatha versus uh, Scarlet Witch. Like, it, it makes sense, like, in the, you know, afterwards, how uh, she kept Vision out of the fight. But then it's just, like, the Vision and the two kids, and they're just staring up at them. <laughs> yeah. That and that kind of shot cool. always kind of is like, eh, they're just standing there, <laughs> right? Do something, yeah. Yeah, basically, <laughs> it's like, do something, bro. But uh, everything else about it, I really, really loved. Because, like I said, everyone gets those moments. Uh, the Vision versus Vision, uh, from going from a laser punch-up battle to 
the thought experiment was so good. And I was so surprised by how many uses of his like intangibility power they threw in there. Yeah, it was so cool. <laughs> yeah, I was very shocked because uh, like obviously effects are getting better and better, but it's like, yeah, he's phasing through walls, phasing through each other. Just part of them are phasing through themselves. It was so well executed that I was just kind of, I was blown away by all of those uses and the effects. And uh, I really loved how Wanda battling Agatha uh, did like that fade out and then used her mind trick on her kind of thing. Yeah. And but then I Agatha know, threw it back at her. Yeah, she reverses it on her. But like just, I don't know if they if they film her in reverse or like undercrank the camera. You know, because she moves all jerky and weird when she does it. Yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I I love that because they did the same thing in Ultron, of course. Uh, so I really loved that as well. Was really great. I also um, loved the scene where like Scarlet Witch is throwing all her power at Agatha, and Agatha's just absorbing it. Mm -hmm. And then so then Scarlet Witch <laughs> just throws a car at her. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so great. <clears throat> like yeah, that's that's the way you should do it. <laughs> Well, and it makes perfect sense as well, because through the MCU movies, uh, you know, Scarlet Witch, she's learned how to fight and fight. And yeah, she, she's like, she would do stuff like that. Yeah. I also, I absolutely 100% love the, like, costume change look that she got at the end of a show. Absolutely. Her, her, so fucking her, cool. Her Scarlet Witch costume was amazing. <laughs> It was, yeah, I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I really liked, like I said, the the reversal of the mind trick was really awesome. And I, because I, I thought initially they might go for, and because they've done it in the past and it was so cliche that I was like, are they going to do just like Agatha absorbs too much power and it becomes too much kind of a thing? But like you said, she was shooting all that power to distract her from the fact that she was shooting the runes. So I thought that was a cool reversal <laughs> yeah that was really well done yeah because i was kind of like that would be so weak and they didn't do what i thought they were going to do great <laughs> yeah i also i thought that they would find a way to keep vision and the kids alive and mm. when they didn't i was like heartbroken in a good way <laughs> sure yeah because after of course uh she battles agatha and they battle the military or well sword sorry and sort of win the day. Yeah, her vision and the kids go back to the house while the hex is collapsing. Yeah, and she just, she gets to put the kids to bed. And then she goes downstairs and she has her final moment with vision. And it's really sweet and lovely. Mm -hmm. And it gives her closure on his death. Kind of. She yeah. also thinks she can bring him back, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and it, and it was kind of a nice sentiment. And it, it is kind of interesting, of course, because her powers got amped by the Mind Stone. He is a being from the Mind Stone. Uh, so there's like that connection there, right? So I could definitely see that being played with, you know, in further media, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> White vision. <laughs> yeah, basically, because he leaves and we don't see him again at the end of the, you know, in any capacity throughout the rest of the show after the thought experiment and his memory restoration. He just flies away. Whee! <laughs> yeah. No, just like you said, they have their moment and the whole heck collapses and vision fades away and she's left back on that sad, empty lot. <laughs> I thought she was going to get back in her car and drive away and I made her comment to Tony. I was like, oh, I hope she didn't have like a milkshake in there because it would be so moldy. <laughs> <laughs> I also thought she was just going to get in the car and then like drive away. Uh, just to try to, like, get out of town without other people seeing her or something like that. But no, she goes and she talks to Monica. Yeah. And then she flies away because she's, she's just like, fuck you, I'm a witch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's like, why was I even driving a car earlier? <laughs> this is dumb. Oh, yeah. Look at me, I'm awful. Well, she was trying to, try, trying to lay low, you know, trying not to reveal all her power. <laughs> yeah, not anymore. <laughs> yeah. Now she gets to literally be what my goal in life is, which is a witch in the in a cabin in the woods away from people. Yeah. I thought that was funny because I was like, is that the same cabin that Bruce Banner was in at the end of the Hulk? <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> it's just it's just the Marvel cab cabin for when 
characters yeah. need to chill out. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. <laughs> But yeah, there was, of course, a bunch of mis- uh, mid-credit things because uh, you get Rambo uh, with a reveal of a scroll saying, hey, someone in space wants to see you. And I thought the scroll like, makeup effect and everything looked really, really good. Oh, it looked awesome. Like It looked even better, I think, than even in Captain Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. It did look a little bit rubbery in Captain Marvel. Yeah, I don't know. I was just like, wow, that was a great uh, makeup effect. And then, like you said, we get... Uh, Scarlet Witch at the cabin at the end there so this was kind of my question is is the end reveal that she's like actually projecting herself and reading a la Doctor Strange and she hears her the voices of her kids so it's like are her kids from another dimension or another timeline what do you think they're going to go with there oh I guess what I thought was that her kids her connection to her kids was through the Mind Stone. Mm-hmm. So they kind of like, in a weird way, exist within her, if that makes sense. I don't know if it's like another dimension or if like their essence was like just being stored in the Mind Stone, kind of right. like Vision was. Well, and that's what I was to say. I, I could kind of see where you're coming from because then it's like the kid is the kids are a blend of her and Vision, of course. And they have that power through the Mind Stone. Yeah, so that's what I thought she was, like, accessing the Mind Stone to pull, like, the essence of her kids out. Okay, yeah, yeah, I can see, yeah. What were you thinking, timeline or pocket dimension? Or, like, I, that's just, like, I got my note there, that it's, like, what what is, yeah, what's kind of the idea that they're doing? Is, is it from another dimension? Is it a timeline? I might think dimension just because they're trying to, they're leaning into a little more dimensionality stuff with, the, especially Doctor Strange, so that it's, yeah, like... Yeah, the next Doctor Strange movie is called The Multiverse of Madness, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, like, I could I could see... You know, of course, they could they could come up with anything. But I was kind of thinking as well that, it, yeah, it could be that from another dimension and that she may have to go have to help them or something like that. It could be like a soul stone situation. Yeah. Like, you know, because when Thanos yeets Gamora off of the cliff. Mm-hmm. And then he sees her kind of after he does the finger snap in the soul stone plane. Yeah. Like that could be like a similar thing for the mind stone maybe that they all have their own pocket dimension. Sure. Well, and it, and I think I've mentioned this to you before that it's like, cause I've read the infinity saga or the infinity war saga, but it's like, yeah, when Thanos kills half the universe, essentially they all get trapped into the soul stone. Right. Yeah, so it's like everybody still kind of existed, but like they were all dead, but in like their souls were in the soul stone, let's just say, or whatever. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So maybe the kids' <laughs> souls are in the Mind Stone or in the piece of the Mind Stone that exists within Wando Maximoff. Yeah. Well, and like I think like I, like you were saying, I, I kind of, I think it makes sense because it's, yeah, it's like blend of her, blend of vision into these children and through the, the power of the Mind Stone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I had uh, my, like, it's like, again, great performances, really enjoyed the ride. I would totally watch more. <laughs> Same. Yeah. Yeah. It really, like, so the Falcon and the Winter Soldier mm-hmm. of the three feels like it's going to be the weakest to me of the three shows right but now i'm like reconsidering that they might all just be really well written and well done (laughs) yeah (laughs) an entirely hopeful outcome (laughs) because like when when i heard about the falcon and the winter soldier i thought it might be like like a 24 type show sure where it's like a lot of action, but like the storyline is kind of meh. Well, I don't know why I thought that because Marvel does do a really good job of capturing the emotional core of characters. But yeah, that's kind of what I suspected would happen. But now after watching WandaVision and like the 
whirlwind of like emotions and plot and everything. Now I'm kind of uh, I'm wondering if uh, I'm wrong and it'll be really good. <laughs> yeah, and well, of course they do have comics to draw on and stuff like that as well, so they can always choose a good storyline and you know, or multi- a couple different storylines and take the best elements to then make these shows and punch up the scripts, of course, for television and stuff. So, yeah, I, I think that, uh, you know, like I said, for me, I was most excited about this one and it definitely delivered. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. yeah. And it, it really gives me hope for the other two shows. Like I feel like yeah. low key is going to be really cool. And I feel like, yeah, I think uh, I think I'm looking forward to the Falcon and the Winter Soldier now. Nice. Well, and and just to speak a bit to Loki as well, like um, I, I again don't know too much, but it's like I knew that the idea was that he was going to travel through either time or dimensions, and it's like they proved they could execute something like that with this show because they traveled through eras of television so seamlessly and so well. Totally. Yeah, I think it's going to be I think it's going to be good. And Owen oh, Wilson's in it. Oh, really nice. And yeah. oh, I had a note talking about, sorry, that as well, just a little bit, that it's like, it's kind of comical to think about how much technology was probably used to replicate technology from 90 years ago or 50 yeah. years ago or whatever. <laughs> that it's just like the amount of computing power and like rendering and like recoloring and everything. Like it's like so much was used to just make it look like something from an early era. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Right. <laughs> That we yeah, were well, and just a real quick rundown of the cast in case, like Paul Bettany, of course, was Vision, Agatha was played by Catherine Hahn, um, Monica Rambo, like you said, her name is Teona Paris, Jimmy Wu was Randall Park, Kat Dennings, as we mentioned, as Darcy, Pietro was Evan Peters, and Hayward was Josh Stamberg. Uh, and I thought, and the Wanda cast... Maximoff was Elizabeth Olsen. Well, I'm pretty sure we she said her name. Her. We said her name many times throughout. The- <laughs> we said Paul Bettany's name too. <laughs> but we, and of course, I'm sure many people have out there, and you've probably re- read that about how his journey as Vision is sort of comical in that he was like brought on for Iron Man to just do voice work as Jarvis, and then it just now he has to show up on set and wear the whole thing. But it seems like he's settled in and really enjoying it because. You know, there's been interviews of him talking positively of his experiences as Vision and stuff like that, right? Yeah, that yeah, good point. I also and, like that um, Elizabeth Olsen is a fan of Scarlet Witch. Like, she often mm-hmm. re- references different storylines that happened to her in the comics. Yeah, very much so. In interviews and stuff, so that's cool. Absolutely. And and like I said, there was a uh, an early interview with her talking before, you know, Disney Plus even existed. She was like, oh, it'd be really cool if they could do like a House of M type storyline, which is a really dark kind of thing. And it's just like, you know, a decade later, here we are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where not only is she, you know, standing around doing cool stuff, but she really showed us a, a character through her acting. Right. Oh, to- oh pardon me. Totally. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, just a little bit more about that end. I thought it was very satisfying to wrap up that sh- the show that, that way. And it, you know, was the logical kind of way. Right. And it's just like, like you said, she had to, she sort of had to get that closure with these characters. And yeah, it was kind of, it was sad. It's choking me up a bit at the end. <laughs> I also liked it because it, it was a very good standalone show. But if they did want to do, like, a second season in the future, it would be possible. Like, they left it open enough for that to be a possibility. Sure. And I think I was just reading before we started recording, you know, a quote from Kevin Feige that basically was like, I won't say yes or no, but he's like, we could always do it if we want kind of thing. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) This is what it basically boiled down to is like, yeah, there's no confirmation. They said they were just going to do the one, but it's like it's been really popular and well, you know well-received i think so they're just like eh, maybe in the future <laughs> yeah that's cool but that's been marvel's playbook for like so many things now ever since a long time ago where they're just like eh, maybe because <laughs> it's like why would you say no they're just like yeah whatever <laughs> oh you guys want that yeah sure <laughs> yeah it'll bring us more money i don't know about that <laughs> i don't know <laughs> Well, and it's curious because, like you said, it's it's on Disney Plus, of course, that it's like, are certain shows going to bring in more audiences? People going to keep their subscription because of it? Like, obviously, that's what they're banking on. But it's like I, mean, I got they, my 
Oh, sorry. I was, I was going to say they've been pretty smart because WandaVision, like one or two week break, Winter Soldier, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, one or two week break, Loki show. So they know people are going to watch it for at least like six or seven months. They're going to keep their Disney Plus subscription. Sure. And well, and that's what I was going to say, like, because I got mine to watch season two of Mando. And then I was like, well, there's only a couple weeks to WandaVision. So it's like, it's not like I'm going to cancel it for a week to then get it again next week. Or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I just, you know what I mean? It's it's because like a lot of times when Netflix, for example, when there'd be like, you know, new seasons of Orange and the New Black, they would see an increase because people would come back, resub to watch the show. So it's and like, then yeah. With, yeah. Yeah. So and people would, yeah, could unsub again. And HBO Go is the same kind of thing or HBO or whatever people, you know, get Game of Thrones or Westworld. They like they sub it on and then they get rid of it. So it's like. Will people, yeah, what's what's people's thinking that you think out there? It's like people are waiting for all nine episodes to be out, then they get it, or do people just get it so they can be week to week? Like, I, I don't think know, people are getting it and watching it week to week because the internet exists and there's so many spoilers. Right. Like, it would be hard to be on the internet at all right now if you haven't seen the show but you wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> You can do it. I do it for a lot of things. Yeah, but you're a hermit. <laughs> you don't go on TikTok or Instagram or Twitter or Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Only one of those I go on. <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> uh, definitely not. The Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't go on Instagram every day, do you? Uh, usually once in a while I'll get on and scroll. Yeah. 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 No. You're not you're not hip enough to know what I'm talking about, Dan. Oh, I totally agree. I I totally don't know what's happening anymore. <laughs> Cause I don't have TikTok. I'm out. <laughs> it's over. I know. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Get it's TikTok. Much over. Yeah. Uh anyways, we should probably wrap it up, hey? I don't yeah. Uh, I kinda had uh, some do you have any more final thoughts or things that touched on that we didn't touch on that you wanted to touch on? No, I like it, and it's a good show, and Elizabeth Olsen is very talented at the end. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, I was, like I said, I was very much looking forward to, to it, but was very much pleasantly surprised. I enjoyed it. It was amazing. Highly recommend. Same. And yes, okay. her outfit at the end was awesome. <laughs> yeah, her outfit is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> if you... Like us, please tell your friends to listen to our podcast and uh, rate and review us on whatever platform you're on. If you don't like us, why did you spend an hour listening to us? That's on you, not on us. <laughs> you can find us online on Instagram, Tome of Uselessness, or on our website, tomeuselessness.com. You can email us, tomeuselessness at gmail.com. We're no longer on Twitter because it's a cesspool. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. Goodbye. Thanks for listening. Stay safe.